Oh, hello. My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Alrighty, guys, we are on book number 11 in Mission Marple, which is my re-reading slash sometimes reading for the first time of the entirety of the Miss Marple canon by Dame Agatha Christie. I am reading these in their order of publication. Starting at the murder of the vicarage, we will end with Miss Marple's final cases, which is a collection of short stories. And we are almost at the end, guys, because we are on number 11 today, which is at Bertram's Hotel. Not one of the better ones, let's be real, but not terrible. We'll get into that. But I just want to let you know, if you've never seen one of these videos before, this is a book review where I will begin by giving you a brief plot synopsis up roundabouts to where we find a body. Not in this case, because that doesn't happen for a while. Then we will get into some like character details. And I will give you sort of my overall thoughts about the book, some non spoilery theme discussion, I tend to focus on sort of like social history and kind of um, how this reflects the evolution of culture in the UK uh, at this particular moment in time. And then we will transition into my full spoilery thoughts, at which point I will feel free to spoil anything in the Christie oeuvre. So you are forewarned at this point, I will let you know when that's happening. I'll have spoilers up here on the screen. You'll know that it's going down. But um, my intention in the first part of the video is that I can talk about the book in a way that hopefully entices you to read it or to give Miss Marple a chance if you have never read anything from her before, if you've not read this book before, uh, and then to transition into full thoughts. So with all that being said, let's get into the plot synopsis for At Bertram's Hotel. Not sure exactly how I'm going to handle this because there's not a natural cutoff point, but let's just see what we do here. So At Bertram's Hotel takes place roughly in 1965. It is about a year since Miss Marple was on vacay in the Caribbean during a Caribbean mystery. And her sweet nephew Raymond sent her on that trip. And he is also paying for her to have a little holiday this time. Guys, Raymond treats his elderly relatives better than I ever have. I feel pretty convicted. I need to like get on my game because I really only have like one of my grandparents left and I should take better care of him. Anyway, Raymond West may be kind of an arse, but he takes good care of Miss Marple. So he and his wife have sent Miss Marple to stay in London for a couple of weeks at a hotel that she really remembers loving from sort of like her youth or her, you know, younger days. And she, by the way, she's like 98 in this book. So she, you know, he's probably like, I need to pamper her while I can because somehow Miss Marple is still alive. Miss Marple therefore is staying at Bertram's hotel, hence the title. And this hotel is sort of like the iconic British hotel. Like it's very English and that is sort of how it sells itself to its clientele. It is filled with like older clergy, older little biddies like Miss Marple and like older aristocrats. That is the core clientele plus a bunch of like American, Canadian and like French tourists basically who want to have an English experience. I felt very attacked by that description and yet so accurate. Like I'm like, yeah, that sounds like something me and my fellow Americans would do would be like, this is so English, I'm gonna go here. So that's kind of what the hotel is. It has like a formal tea, whatever. And a lot of this book is sort of meeting the various characters who are working at or staying at this hotel. And there's a lot of characters in this book. I'm not even going to attempt to, to describe all of them. I think I gave you the right kind of classes of them already. Some notable people among that include the main like hotel dude, Michael Gorman. He's like the, I think he's called the commissioner or like the common I forget. Um, that guy, Canon Pennyfeather, who is an extremely forgetful clergyman who uh, is staying at this hotel and like is depending on everybody around him to help him like remember what the fuck is going on in his life because he can't remember. There is uh, Lady Selina, who's somebody that Miss Marple knew from her earlier days and, you know, kind of interacts with towards the beginning of the book. There is Lady Bess Sedgwick, who uh, is a fixture at the hotel and she is very scandalous. She's had like four husbands notorious sort of like it girl or like girl about town. I get the impression she's in maybe like her kind of mid 40s. So like, I guess her heyday would have been in the 40s, like maybe around the time of the war. I don't know. So she's there. There's this like super 
sexy studly race car driver named Ladslow around. There is a young girl named Alvira Blake and her guardian who are staying there. There's all the people guys. That's basically what I'm trying to tell you. There's so many people in this and there's not really a natural place for me to cut this off because yes, this is a murder mystery. That does not happen until much later in the book. I would honestly, I think vibe wise, this feels much more like one of her sort of like action adventure type books. So think something like a Seven Dials, like it feels like it's more in that tradition of her writing than the mystery part, which makes the presence of Miss Marple in this book um, slightly kind of off. Like, I just think this is sort of a weird book all in all. But like I said, eventually there is a murder. Before that though, there is a big train robbery that's happening. And that is sort of how the police get involved because they get a whiff that some of the people who are involved in the robbery might be staying at the hotel. Um, so Inspector Davy gets involved and he meets Miss Marple and they sort of are teaming up to figure out what happens. Canon Pennyfeather has like a weird experience. So they're trying to figure that out. And they're also trying to solve this robbery. That's sort of the main like mystery during most of the book. But yeah, okay, I think that probably is what I can tell you about the synopsis of this. I'll transition into sort of my thoughts at this point. So my thoughts are this, because I tend to read this more in the line of like one of her sort of like more action adventure type books. I think this book doesn't make me as mad as some of the other ones in the Christie canon that are supposed to be mysteries but aren't that mysterious. You know, the, the book that this actually reminds me quite a bit of, and I want to say that maybe this book comes after, this might be chronologically the next one she wrote, is Third Girl, which is in the Poirot series in the sense of there's a lot of like ground being laid, atmosphere being set, time with characters, and not that much of a mystery, like a true mystery until the end. It reminds me a lot of that in terms of its pacing. So I guess that kind of makes me like this book more than I think I probably should. I think I gave this a three star. It is, don't get me wrong, for the 11 books that we've read so far, this is unquestionably the weakest one. So in terms of my ranking, I've got this at the bottom right now. Stay tuned, maybe it won't stay there, we'll find out. Um, but right now, this is definitely the weakest one. But I still gave it three stars because even though I don't think I probably should like this as much as I do, there's just something about this that has a lot of the charm that I quite like in a Christie. Miss, like for one thing, Miss Marple cannot stop eavesdropping in this book. And it just makes me laugh, like how just like, shamelessly that woman will just sit in a chair hiding or just like not being noticed and let people spill their entire life story that gives you all the clues you need like right next to her. I really was enjoying that. So Miss Marble eavesdropping was a lot of fun. I thought the characters were enjoyable. Like I don't know that they, any of them really made a lot of sense or were that convincing, but I still enjoyed the time I was spending with them for the most part. Less so with like Elvira. I was like not into her. She really annoyed me actually, but like pretty much everyone else I was pretty interested in. I really found Canon Pennyfeather to be very endearing, like the super forgetful clergyman. I, I enjoyed that. And then ultimately the kind of like premise of the book or this conceit of how things unravel, I found to be an interesting idea, even if it's not necessarily executed that well. So I think overall, I was kind of charmed by this book in a way that maybe it doesn't fully deserve, but that I did enjoy. So that's why ultimately I would give it three stars, even though it's like, I can't totally explain to you why this was sort of like, I just sort of had like a fondness for this for whatever reason. Like I was just sort of like, okay, like, I don't think empirically this is that good, but I'm not having a bad time. In contrast to something, for instance, uh, in the 60s, that it's a sim, I think it's probably similar in terms of the actual qu quality, which is the clocks from Hercule Poirot. That was one that I just was actively not having a good time during and therefore like really resented and really did not like. This is one where even though it has problems, I'm, I'm kind of charmed by it as a whole. So I, I still had a decent time. It's not as repetitious as some of the other books of the 60s are for her and definitely in the 70s. It, it doesn't have as many of those problems. They're there, but it's not as bad as some of the other books in terms of the quality of writing. Even the third girl, I think, which is the next book in the series, I think that is noticeably worse than this. That being said, this is, I would say, noticeably worse than the book that came before it, which was A Caribbean Mystery, which is the last one we talked about. This is a huge drop off in quality. Like A Caribbean Mystery, 
is is like one of the like is a top tier Marple book. It's very good, I think. Um, and this one is not like it's definitely it's the worst one I think so far in what we've read. And um, so it is a notice noticeable drop in quality overall. But um, I am repeating myself now. But just saying like I didn't I wasn't mad at it. I enjoyed my time. I wouldn't like steer someone away from this one. It just wasn't one of the best ones in the canon. And then just a couple of non-spoilery things before we move into the more spoilery section. First is that um, this was inspired, I believe, by the Great Train Robbery, uh, which I think was in like 1963-ish. And so I just found that to be cool, like to have another pe like another property basically that um, was so heavily influenced by that particular event in history. We've gotten a lot of like pop culture media um, out of that particular event, so. I just think it's cool that this one was also influenced by that. And then uh, in terms of just overall thematic content for this one, I think that this and the Mirror Cracked could be an interesting sort of companion reads just because I think both of them thematically have a lot to do with living in the past versus living in the present. And whereas I find the Mirror Cracked has a much more sort of like sad or melancholic tone to that theme, I think this one is much more affirming. Like, I kind of feel like what this book is about is that like, even when you try to live in the past, it's not gonna work. So you should just move forward and live in the present. Enjoy, you know, what you have now, like enjoy where you are, when you are, for what it is. So I, I really kind of like those as bookends to each other. Um, and I, I liked Miss Marple kind of having some active thoughts about that during this book. So yeah, I think that that was a good, like I think that theme was communicated well in this book and um, is interesting, especially, you know, Christy is definitely, I think like what, 75-ish at this point. She's definitely kind of coming to the end of her life. And um, I think that it's interesting to see her maybe working through some of those questions she's having through the character of Marple, who, again, let me just tell you, is 98 years old at this point in these books and uh, is going strong, still kicking ass and taking names. Uh, but I think Christy is sort of using her as a maybe a vehicle to sort of muse on her own mortality or, or the passage of time for herself. Okay, so now we're gonna transition into the spoileriness of it all. So a few things that I wanted to highlight. One is that this is a book that continues the theme that we really see in the 60s of mothers and daughters and the importance of good mothering for daughters to turn out correctly, which is something that Christy had zero interest in earlier in her life, but like as she aged became very interested in. Again, I think in the next book thematically, Third Girl is also very much about this. So um, yeah, just I think that we definitely see that between Bess and Elvira and like Bess as this like utterly negligent mother and like flippantly so, and you never really get a satisfying reason why Bess is the way she is, I don't think. And in that sense, I do think that the characterization in this book is is quite deficient, especially compared to something like a Caribbean mystery, which came right before it. Overall, the character motivations in this book, I don't think make a whole lot of sense. Um, Elvira is a character I really struggled with. I didn't enjoy her at all. Like I did not enjoy spending time with her. And then just like the entire coincidences around Elvira, and Bess, I just found really unsatisfying. Like the coincidence of them both being in the same hotel at the same time and it being the hotel that Bess is running all these like illegal shenanigans out of, I didn't like that. And then I also really don't like the coincidence that both of them are in love with the same dude. Like I just, it's too much. It's just too much. That's what it boils down to. And therefore when we get to the actual murder mystery piece of this, it's just so unsatisfying. Like I just, this is why I almost really wish that this had purely just been like a, an action adventure type book and, and maybe not even have Miss Marple in it. Though I think that I like how Miss Marple is used in this, I guess, but I guess maybe make this less of a mystery one for her and more of just, like I said, action adventure might've been more fun. I don't know. I just think that the actual killing of Gorman is just not, it's so rushed at the end and it's not satisfying. Something else on a mechanical level that I think doesn't work in this, and honestly, I may not have noticed this if um, Dane from Dane Reads had not pointed this out when he read it last year, is that the, um, usually, Agatha Christie is usually pretty good on her mechanics, especially in her like kind of 
prime time. Like timelines are always important. Where people are is always important. So she doesn't communicate the end sort of like action scene in a way that's very satisfying. Like people just move from one place to the other without really an explanation. Like she doesn't, she doesn't write that action scene in a very effective way. So I think it does add to the sort of feeling of like, this just sort of went off the rails here at the end. Like what is going on? So I think that that's not great. Uh, so I didn't really love that. But that being said, all of these execution problems are certainly there, but the idea is there. The idea being that this appears to be this very respectable hotel. And then actually what this is, is a cover for all of these illegal activities and that the people, people like Miss Marple are essentially a cover for um, all this illegal shit. So I thought that was a really strong idea um, and I just wish it had been executed better. And I guess one last note would just be that I do think we see a continuation in this book of uh, our uh, female fury theme throughout this Marple reread that, that basically Miss Marple is just, um, a vehicle for Agatha Christie's supplemented female rage. Um, so I definitely think we see that sort of in the viciousness of uh, of Elvira. Like Elvira is very ruthless and, and kind of kills this guy who she thinks is gonna get in the way of her getting what she wants. And um, she's very selfish and calculated in that way. And I think we're meant to see Bess as having ultimately redeemed herself through finally, um, essentially like taking the fall for something on behalf of her daughter. Like finally that sort of primal mother instinct taking over and in her last act, finally being the mother that she should have been all along. Um, so I don't know, I think that there's some interesting gender stuff you could dig into here. Um, I just, yeah, again, that ending though, not good and really, really diminishes the book overall. I think it materially weakens it as a whole once you kind of find out everything, um, the solution to everything. So that's kind of why I go back and forth on this because I, I had a pretty good time reading it, but I think when you start to even sort of kick the tires on the underlying foundations of the story, it doesn't really hold water. Those are sort of muddled thoughts, but that was sort of my ultimate response to this book is I don't really, I don't really know what to think about this exactly. It, I enjoyed myself, but not the best. Okay, so I think that will do it for At Bertram's Hotel. Stay tuned because next we have Nemesis, which was the last book that was written in the Marple canon. Not the last one published, but I think especially now that I've read all the novels, because um, I did read Sleeping Murder, I think that probably I should have read Sleeping Murder in the order of it when it was written because it is not really the ending to the series. Nemesis really is the ending of the series. So we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. But anyway, stay tuned for that. That will be two weeks from now, I think on the 5th. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought of At Bertrand's Hotel. You can always find the information to our Goodreads group where we're kind of doing spoiler filled discussions below. Um, so you can definitely go hang out with folks there who are doing the read along. And yeah, I think that will do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. Hope you're having a super lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.